Welcome to another Six Patterns video. My name is Max. I'm Kevin. And uh, we're doing this special series called the Top 25 Pearls of Pulmonary Pathology. And uh, today we have uh, pearl number five. So we've talked about this with a few of the other pearls. Needle core biopsy, older person. We know the story. We know this the patient's story. patient's got a target. And the target's likely a mass. Or mass nodule. lesion. Yep. And we can see that they've clearly sampled a mass. This would certainly look like a mass lesion. Yep. And uh, we have some inflammatory cell infiltrate. And now we're starting to get into some atypical cells. Right. Embedded in dense fibrosis, dense fibrosis. architectural distortion. Yep. And, and really bad atypia. Super bad atypia. Wow. A reactive yeah. inflammatory cell infiltrate around them. Wow, that could be adenocarcinoma in situ, eh? Yeah, go see pearl number four for adenocarcinoma in situ in our discussion on that. But again, see these cells are standing up. They're, They're standing tall. They are not windswept. You're right. So we've got a very clear adenocarcinoma. Now this core came to us after it was previously uh, reviewed and worked up. And uh, previously this core was subjected to a number of detailed immunohistochemical studies like cytokeratin 7, cytokeratin 20, cytokeratin 5-6, P40, P53, P53, PTF1, <laughs> synapsin, CD20, CD20, <laughs> etc. So much so that uh, the block was exhausted. So a diagnosis of adenocarcinoma was rendered. These cells were TTF1 positive. Cytokeratin 7 positive too, surprisingly. <laughs> and a diagnosis of adenocarcinoma was, was rendered. And um, then the note came from the oncologist. This patient has a brain met. The biopsy was performed at our institution so molecular studies could be performed. Please make sure they're done on this biopsy before you do any wasteful immunohistochemical staining. Oops, that hurts. That hurts. Because we've exhausted the tissue block with immunohistochemical stains here. Yeah. That's a challenge. That's a phone call I don't, I don't want to have. I don't want any part of that. Jeez. So you, that, take, you take the call, Max. So that brings us to pearl number five. And that's the tissue is the issue only if the sample is ample. Yeah. Things have changed. And we're talking about molecular studies. Yeah, here. things have changed. There was a time when pathologists used to boast about, I can make a cancer diagnosis on two cells. It's all I need. Just two. And 400 immunohistochemical stains. And, uh, and maybe some a bunch of immunohistochemical stains. Now, it's kind of like, okay, okay, you made the diagnosis of cancer, but we really need some other stuff done. So the excitement about your ability to make a cancer diagnosis on minimal tissue, those days are gone. There's no excitement. I get a biopsy that has two adenocarcinoma cells. I, I've got a problem because I got to get back on the phone and say, if this patient's still in the hospital, we need more tissue because we're going to need molecular studies in order to take care of this patient according to standards in today's practice. And my saying it's adenocarcinoma and running away is not going to do the trick. It's not helpful because what is needed now is something more than just a diagnosis of adenocarcinoma. So the important thing is to remember as a pathologist, like, yes, our diagnosis, our interpretation is important. But when you're talking about lung adenocarcinoma, you always have to be thinking in addition that it's possible molecular studies are going to be needed yeah. on a case like this. So how can we do that? What, what, what tools do we have? What protocols can we put into place in order to help optimize our ability to provide uh, tissue for molecular studies? Starts in the gross room. It's got to start in the gross room. So, assuming you get uh, three core biopsies from in interventional radiology, and you, the core biopsies are being processed in the gross room, those cores should never be put in the same paraffin block. Yeah, maybe one, maybe two cores in the same block. If you have six cores, you can put them across three sure, blocks. Sure, because you don't know, maybe not all the cores are going to have cancer, 
right? Some of them could just be fibrous tissue or just necrosis. So you want to divide up the cores and then you want to get an H&E stain on each of the cores, whatever your protocol is for getting H&E stains, one per slide, four sections per slide, whatever it is. And then if they're going to cut deeper in the block to give you another slide, the intervening unstains, which would normally be thrown away, should be saved on slides. Pick them up on an unstained slide. Right. And that gives you the opportunity then to obtain some immunohistochemical stains without refacing the block. Right. Because That's as soon as you reface the block you on lose the skinny another. needle cores, yep. you're going to lose the vast majority of the tissue. Yeah. So having those two unstained slides there, they're like, they're like cash in your back pocket. You pull them out if you need them. Yeah. And what two stains, for the most part, are you going to need to get on a case of a needle core biopsy of a lung cancer that's a non-small cell carcinoma? TTF1. For adenocarcinoma. P40. For squamous cell carcinoma. Right. So in this particular case, we don't need any stains, right? right. Because this is adenocarcinoma. Correct. Morphologically, but next, what if it's a metastasis? Do I need to do other markers for adenocarcinoma? If you've got a solitary lung mass, it doesn't matter. This is highly likely to be lung adenocarcinoma. So don't get a CDX2, don't do a CK20 looking for colonic metastases. You've got a solitary lung mass, this is probably a lung adenocarcinoma. And whatever you do, never get neuroendocrine stains. Unless there's neuroendocrine morphology by H and E. Yeah. But Large. you know, one person's glandular structures is another person's neuroendocrine rosette. rosette. So I would just say if you think it's neuroendocrine and you think it makes a difference, you can always get a pancytokeratin stain because if it's a neuroendocrine and it has neurosecretory granules, yep. it will have a perinuclear dot on cytokeratin staining. So that's a way to get around doing synaptophys and chromogranin. And CD56, the number of cases that I see come through that have those stains on them that are absolute no benefit is boggles the mind, frankly. And every one of those stains, when you're talking about a biopsy from a lung tumor, potentially is wasting critical tissue that's right. needed for molecular studies. Right. So a whole bunch of information out there on molecular studies, what molecular studies to do. The reality is, is that it's really still a small number of molecular studies that have enough data to be recommended to be done. And on, FDA approved. On right. all higher stage lung adenocarcinomas. Right. EGFR, ALK, right. ROS1. Right. Multiple different techniques, you can perform that. But I think we, going into the future, we as pathologists need to get used to the idea that even if we're sending these tests out, we need to own the ability to perform those tests. Yeah. And we do that by conserving tissue. Right. So the tissue is the issue. If the sample is ample. Only if the sample is ample. Now this case is, a little, bit, is not ample. a little bit borderline with yeah. ample yeah. sample. Right. We've got a couple of millimeters of tumor here. There's a lot of background inflammatory cells. And the molecular people get really upset when there's all that DNA there that might contaminate. Right. But over here we have we have a reasonable amount. We've got three or four millimeters of tumor here that I think it's worth at least attempting molecular studies on a specimen like this. Yeah, and you know, this is what we're saying today in 2019, and that will change in 2020. Yeah. So if you're watching this video in 2025 and having a good laugh, remember we recognize that things were changing fast. And we're giving you the current recommendations based on the published guidelines. For sure. So, pearl number five, the tissue is the issue only if the sample is ample. So, take steps within your gross room, within your histology, to preserve tissue from molecular studies. Thanks, Max. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and comment below and let us know uh, what you'd like to see in the future.